Hey everybody, welcome back to another edition of Kicks Over Coffee. I'm Matt Priest. I've got my gargantuan NC State mug and I'm here with Carrie Rasmussen from Faro from the Great White North. Carrie, uh, these are strange times that we're in, but I'm so excited that you're willing to carve out a piece of your day working from home to chat with me over Kicks Over Coffee. Welcome to the program. Thanks for coming on. Thank you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> of course. So first things first, let's get to what's behind you because let's start to the positive side of things before we start yes. talking about some of our challenges. Do explain what's going on behind you and what are some of the shoes that you have on display? Uh, so behind me, I, I decided to film this today in front of our shoe collection. So uh, Flu Fluvog, as most people who know me know, it's my favorite brand. And yeah. um, they uh, are like little pieces of art. So I felt last year that they, it was a shame that they were sitting in the closet. So um, JP built nice shelves lit everything that's so cool. and uh yeah so that's right when you come into our home you are greeted by uh, approximately 35 pairs of blue bugs that is awesome you have that is an amazing home and setup that you have and i want you yeah. to hold that thought we're going to go back to kind of your top five favorites at the end give something okay give people something to look forward to but you're right blue bog <laughs> is they are works of art i have several pair and lisa has several pair uh, and there really are cool shoes, and he's a he's an amazing designer. Yep, he's awesome. <laughs> Doing good <All> things. Right. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, for sure. And you and we'll get. I mean, I could do a whole episode about Fluvog. Um, you had a chance to meet him several times, right? Yes, and uh, the first two times I cried. So, <laughs> yes. <laughs> You're my kind of girl, Carrie. Crying with a shoe designer. That's that's what we love to hear at FDRA. And yeah, of, uh, well. I, I have an emotional connection to to shoes, so yeah. yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of emotional connections, one reason I wanted to have this interview with you is because I needed some connection with the outside world. We're all working from home. We're all hunkering down um, per the guidance of our respective governments. Talk to me about what the landscape is in Canada right now, just from a broader sense, and then maybe we'll drill down on what's happening at retail on the footwear side for Canada. Sure. Um, well, right now, three provinces have declared a state of emergency. So that's BC, Alberta and Ontario. Um, the government announced yesterday a $25 billion relief package to help people that are being laid off or unemployed as a result of the uh, coronavirus. And um, this morning, just before we started this, um, both of our governments announced that the northern border will be closed to all traffic except for um, essential items. So the movement of goods is still allowed to happen, but movement of people is now off. Yeah, so for Faro, that's a great, you have expertise in this area. Obviously, we've talked about being non-resident importers. We've talked about all these different technical terms that I don't want to kind of get too much in the weeds. But as you're thinking about moving goods, maybe from a DC into Canada, or you're bringing goods as an American brand into your own DC in Canada, what are some things that you guys are advising your clients on as it relates to the movement of goods around Canada during this time? Well, right now, um, I can tell you that the priority is going to be given to food, medical devices, um, medicines, that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. Everything else is sort of going to take a back seat, but the borders are still open to all other international modes of transportation for movement of goods. Right. Um, so, you know, I think as more and more retail outlets are closing down, even for a short time, that means that e-commerce is going to rise. And so people will still need their warehouses. They will still need to be shipping product into Canada because people are going to be wanting it. Um, you know, I was busy getting some stuff online yesterday because the stores that I needed to get stuff from were not open anymore. Let's talk about that. What we've seen, the, we're tracking kind of the store closures here in the U.S. and a number of companies, Nike, Under Armour, Vans, have shut have shuttered their doors for the time being. Others, more mass retail, who have essentials like Walmart and Target, are announcing uh, shorter hours to allow for cleaning of surfaces and the store as a whole. Uh, what have been some of the announcements you've seen from retailers in Canada? They're following suit. So I think because a lot of the major retailers are both 
in Canada and the US, it just makes sense to do it um, throughout their whole company. So, right. you know, and a lot of the anchor stores at the malls are closing. So I have a feeling maybe the malls are going to be shutting down soon, too. I don't know. <laughs> You know, everybody is doing reduced hours, but, um, you know, it is going to be very painful for the small retailer. Yeah, it is going to be very painful. We we have a big concern about that. Even our, we do a weekly sales survey. We're starting to see the bottom drop out this past week for footwear, retail, brick and mortar in the U.S., but we are seeing a surge. There's a big surge in e-commerce purchases for footwear. Um, uh, Clearly not enough to to kind of backstop the loss in demand at the brick and mortar side or on the brick and mortar side. But we're, you know, my hope is that as people move to purchase online, that we have the ability to get that product. But at the same time, I think people need to prioritize essentials and, and it's going to be extremely painful in the short term. We can all expect, I would think. Absolutely. Um, you know, I guess, if you wanted to joke a little, it'd be nice if somehow people could incorporate a roll of toilet paper into every online purchase. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. The bonus add-on item, right? Like add-on yeah. item, toilet paper. <laughs> Gift with purchase. <laughs> <laughs> what is, what's the overall mood around, you know, and, and tell us where exactly you're located so that people have an understanding in Canada where you are and then give us the overall mood of, of folks that you're interacting with your Canadian cohorts and, and what is Faro doing as, as, a, as a corporation in response to this crisis? Sure. Well, I live in Calgary, Alberta. Um, and I think we are very lucky here because we, are, we have close proximity to the mountains. And so they are encouraging people to get outside. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, keep your distance, but get outside. And so I happen to live 45 minutes from the Rocky Mountains. Mm-hmm. And that is the, the perfect place to go because that has always been my happy place. Yeah. So, um, you know, so I think we will be doing more of that. Um, you know, hopefully once the snow melts, we just had more snow again last night. Oh um, God. you know, so we've, we've had a lot of people, um, same as everywhere else hoarding, um, certain items. Uh, my son had a, a little bit of a breakdown at the grocery store last week, um, just seeing everything gone. Yeah. So, you know, you just have the opportunity to have a teaching moment about supply and only taking what you need, leaving things for other people. You know, we have to think about people that live paycheck to paycheck and maybe can only afford four rolls of toilet paper at a time. So we have to, you know, we have to think about our friends, our neighbors, our family, and make sure that everybody has what they need. Yeah, that's well said, because there's there's definitely a need out there to, to be thoughtful. And as our government's telling us, don't hoard, so, you know, the, the, the retailers that provide essentials will remain open. They'll be stocked, not to worry, but human nature takes over. And next thing you know, you got 10,000 rolls of toilet paper and, you know, and not enough places to use it. Exactly. So, and then as far as Pharaoh, you know, they've, they've allowed people that can work from home to work from home. They've asked if anybody's feeling ill to please take the time um, our salaries are not in jeopardy. Um, you know, they're being very good about keeping everybody updated as to any new processes that are being put into place. But, you know, for us, we deal mostly in a digital world. So right. um, a lot of our um, entries come in by email. So, you know, we're not touching paper. We're not dealing with drivers anymore. So um, I think as as long as everybody in the office remains healthy, then, you know, we're, we're still going gangbusters because, you know, the flow of goods is not stopping. Right. And in, and in fact, it may even increase as supply goes up. So, um, you know, we're, we're going full speed ahead. Good. Good. That's good to hear. Yeah. My hope is that this is temporary. We get beyond it and, none of us have missed a beat because we've been able, because of technology and the digitization of the workforce, we've been able to, to keep pace. Not everyone as we know, but, um, but we'll keep doing what we can. Um, What are anything else I'm not thinking about as in terms of Canada and navigating this crisis? Has there been, um, has the prime minister laid out any kind of, deadlines or timelines as to when things will be lifted or is he just kind of following the overall trends that governments are taking on as it relates to battling the crisis? 
I think we'll see more in the days to come. Um, you know, like I said, today they'll be announcing how this $25 billion in aid is going to be rolled out. Um, right. You know, and, and a lot of people seem to be going on a two week by two week basis. So, you know, they're, um, we'll see what it looks like in two weeks and then they'll make another announcement. So it's, it really is a day by day um, sort of thing. Um, the one thing we're not too sure about is if um, the USMCA or translated into Canadian CUSMA is uh, going to be, uh, it was ratified by Canada and uh -huh. is supposed to start on June 1st. Yeah. Um, actually, our website, pharaoh.com, we have a little uh, countdown. So um, oh, cool. when I checked this morning, it was like 70, 40, 14 hours, <laughs> five <laughs> minutes. <laughs> So, um, but that may change too with, um, with the coronavirus. So we'll see right. how that plays out. But anyways, if people want more information on that, they can go to our website. That's cool. Yeah. It's, uh, our ambassador, our trade ambassador has indicated that the start of June is the timeline to move over to the UFCMCA as we call it on our side of the border. Uh, but check out pharaoh.com uh, for more information as we get closer in it. I mean, we're all, we all have a lot of time. Doesn't mean we're not working, but if you want to pull up that clock from time to time and check out, you know, do the countdown yourself, particularly if you're sourcing footwear in places like Mexico and you're trying to sell that footwear into Canada um, as an American brand, then uh, go to fair.com and check that out. So let's pivot away from some of the negative and let's get into footwear because the thing I love about you, Carrie, <laughs> there are many things I love about you, but the one is that you do have a passion for footwear. Not everyone who works in our industry does. Um, so why don't you walk us through some of your top styles so we can have fun with this, this interaction. Okay, sure. So my number five. Number and, five. And these really kind of are in particular order when people okay. say not in any particular order. These are kind of in particular <laughs> order. So this is Sidewalk. All right. C-Y-D-W-O-Q. These are handmade shoes. They're made in California. They have leather soles. These, uh, there is actually a store in the financial district in New York City. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like a little bit of Nirvana going in because like you get that smell of leather. Like it's uh, really like, yeah. 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 Right. It is nice. Uh, so that's, that's number five. five. Okay. Number four. Number four is Trippin. Trippin. Right. Yeah. Nice. So these, again, these are made in Portugal. Uh -huh. And they are fantastic. Every single pair of trippins, as soon as you put them on, they feel like slippers. Now, let me ask you a dumb, dumb question. Are these different brands, or is this trippin by Fluvog? No, these are, these are all different brands. Yeah. I, okay. I, I went through brands. I'm shocked uh, that you don't have all Fluvogs in this countdown. Well, it's not my top five favorite shoes. It's my brands. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Trippin. Trippin's number okay. four. What's number three? Yes. Number three is Doc Martens. Oh, of course. Yes, classic. Yep. The, well, these are a 1460. Look. No, That's no, nice. no. These are a 1460 with the ribbon lace. So, um, yeah, That's always really a staple cool. in my wardrobe since 1990. Wow, that's strong. Yeah. I got my first, then, my first docs. Before we go to number two, I got my first docs in 1994. Um, and I still have, in fact, I got two pair that year. I was in high school. I still have both pair and they, they're, they held up big time. So well, it's, it's funny because they are a heritage brand and um, people that have them do have an emotional connection and they do have a story about their first pair. Uh -huh. And, you know, mine were a uh, patent yellow. So they were like these really bright yellow patent boots. And I was not making a lot of money, and, uh -huh. uh, but I saved and I saved and I saved, and I was so proud to have them. I would expect then, no less than yellow <laughs> from Carrie Rasmussen. <laughs> and I will say my emotional attachment is in this order in 1994. Pearl Jam, Flannel, Doc Martens. It was like the whole package for me. So that's what I was rocking yes. back then. Yeah. Well, yeah, I used to have my head shaved bald and then I would wear my jeans with one leg and with plaid tights and then my Doc right. Martens. So yeah, that Here was- Here we amazing. are all grown up. <laughs> <laughs> Still wearing Doc Martens. Um, so Still my number two, <laughs> right, number my two. number two, yep. Keen. 
Ah, of course. Good old Portland-based Keen. Yes. So the reason they're number two is because I live in these when I am out and about and walking around in the mountains. Yeah, um, I will. I usually send the folks from Keen pictures of where my Keens are that day. Uh -huh. So yeah, and you know I get some really beautiful photos, and uh, they're like extremely durable. The whole family can wear them, and I think that's why they're one of my top brands too, because they do have uh, footwear for the whole family. They do, indeed. And, you know, they're just good people at Keen. Uh, they're good people all over the place in our industry. But for Keen in particular, they're good people. And that's the beauty of being in this industry. So many times during the year, I'm texting a picture of my kids wearing a certain brand to the CEO or some executive at that brand just to show them that these are, there's a personal connection with a lot of these brands as you're, in the, as you're laying out for us in real time right now. Absolutely. And, you know, a lot of these companies are clients who become friends. That's right. And, um, you know, you, you want to support your family, right? <laughs> of course. So, and last but not least, number one. Do, do, do. These are my latest nice. purchase. Those are yes. cool. Yes. Aren't they amazing? They are really cool, actually. actually. Here, I got to show you the, the heel. Oh, yeah. Yeah, fresh. They haven't even been worn yet, but... Does that say groovy on the bottom? It does say go groovy. Go groovy. Yep. That's so what I like... That screams 1967 San Francisco, which is, I think, <laughs> part of the vibe that he has, so... Yeah. Well, uh, what I like is every soul has a unique message. Some have um, his signature. Um, you know, I have a pair that says, yes, you are super cute. Uh -huh. um, I've got a pair that has music notes on the bottoms. So when you walk in the snow, it leaves like little music notes in the That's snow. Cool. So, oh yeah, no, it's <laughs> so. So those you are my top five the, friends. You kick someone in the face, they'll have an indentation on their face. <laughs> with the messages. You're super cute. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> no violence, please. Don't kick anyone. In the yeah, face. no. <laughs> Oh my gosh, Carrie, this has been awesome. Do you have any other like highlights? Those are your top five. So it's Fluvog, Keen, Doc Martin, Trippin, and what was the fifth? Sidewalk. Sidewalk. What a great collection, as always, Carrie Rasmussen. You don't disappoint. You, the thing that makes you great is that you are a part of the FDRA family. Um, you have shown what it means to be kind of a, a supporter of the organization, and we could not do what we do without you and your support. Uh, and so thank you so much for all the love and grace and support that you give us and our members every every single day. So I'm so happy that you were able to join me over Kicks Over Coffee during this unprecedented time we're in. Yes, well, thank you for having me. And I am going to send a toast to everybody out there. Yep. S stay warm, stay safe, stay healthy, stay happy. <laughs> you got it. So folks... What a great way to end this episode of Kicks Over Coffee. Go to kicksovercoffee.com for additional episodes with great leaders and, and uh, executives in our industry as we talk about a variety of different topics from, from the coronavirus and retail to top fashion trends and Carrie Rasmussen's closet all the way to sustainability and to um, trade data and import data. You name it, we cover it on Kicks Over Coffee. Thanks for joining us and we will see you on the next edition. Thank <laughs> you.